SpaceX never stops breaking boundaries. Ten years ago, they stunned the world by vertically landing a Falcon 9 rocket on a sea platform, known as a drone ship. Now, they're pushing the envelope again with their next-generation rocket, Starship. Yes, SpaceX has ambitious plans to recover their massive Starship rocket in the middle of the ocean. But how exactly do they plan to achieve this? What potential benefits does this bring? And what challenges must they overcome to make this a reality? Let's dive into these questions in today's episode of Great SpaceX. SpaceX has completed four integrated flights of Starship, demonstrating a stable ascent process and gradual improvements in navigating the harsh re-entry process. With this solid foundation, SpaceX is now targeting the next critical milestone, landing. When it comes to landing, most people think of the Mechazilla arm, the method SpaceX is primarily focused on and plans to implement in Flight 5. However, looking further into the future, SpaceX is considering multiple landing methods for Starship. One notable method is landing on a drone ship similar to the technique currently used for the Falcon 9. This method has moved from concept to a concrete plan, now under consideration by the FAA. The proposal, included in the FAA's Draft Environmental Impact Statement, or EIS, for Starship Operations in Florida, outlines plans for landing the Super Heavy Booster downrange in the Atlantic Ocean on a drone ship, and landing Starship on a drone ship. Starship will launch from Launch Complex 39A in Florida, marking the beginning of its ambitious journey. After the initial launch, the two stages will separate. The Super Heavy Booster will land on a drone ship in the Gulf of Mexico, a strategic maneuver that SpaceX has already executed successfully in previous missions. Meanwhile, Starship will continue its flight aiming to complete its mission objectives before returning to Earth. Upon return, Starship will land on a drone ship in a designated ocean area. The FAA's Draft Environmental Impact Statement for Starship Florida does not specify these locations in detail. However, another FAA document, the Draft Tiered Environmental Assessment, for SpaceX Starship at Boca Chica, Texas, outlines several potential landing sites. The first area is the Gulf of Mexico, a familiar site where the Super Heavy Booster has landed in recent missions. Beyond that, the North Pacific Ocean is another option, with landing zones either between the Hawaiian Islands and the U.S. mainland or west of Hawaii near the central region of the Pacific Ocean. The South Pacific Ocean offers another potential site located along the west coast of the South American continent. Finally, the Indian Ocean, where Starship landed on its last flight, provides a vast expanse stretching from the west of Australia to the east of Madagascar. In all of these locations, SpaceX has two plans for Super Heavy and Starship expending the stages or landing them on a drone ship. We will focus on the second method as expending stages is not aligned with SpaceX's long-term goals. Of course, landing on a drone ship offers numerous advantages. Firstly, it allows for greater flexibility. A spacecraft may not always be able to return and land at a specific fixed location. In such cases, the drone ship with its mobility can move to the optimal recovery site ready to pick up the Starship and Super Heavy. This approach addresses the limitations of landing in a designated landing zone or using the Mechazilla arm, which can involve challenges related to controllability and fuel requirements. Another significant advantage of drone ship landings is safety. Landing in an offshore location minimizes potential impacts on surrounding systems. In the event of an accident, the ocean can absorb the explosion and debris, unlike land-based landings where debris could be scattered widely, posing risks to nearby structures and equipment. This is a notable concern with the Mechazilla Arm method, which requires high precision and poses risks to surrounding infrastructure, particularly tank farms. Drone ships mitigate this risk by providing a safer, more isolated landing environment. Of course, this doesn't diminish the capabilities of the Mechazilla ARM system. Each method has its distinct advantages. The ARM excels in the ability to quickly recover and turn around the spacecraft, a feat that drone ships cannot match. This rapid turnaround is crucial for SpaceX's goal of high-frequency launches. To put drone ships into regular operation, SpaceX needs to address how to quickly recover Starship to meet the high launch demands of the future. This requires careful research and innovative solutions. Another challenge involves modifying Starship's design to accommodate drone ship landings. 
The Falcon 9 booster, for example, uses landing legs in order to touch down safely, a feature that current Starship models lack. Integrating landing legs could be essential not only for drone ship landings, but also for future missions involving lunar or Martian landings. As a fan of Starship with landing legs, I hope SpaceX will consider this upgrade, enhancing Starship's versatility and ensuring safe landings across various environments. Or, for those who, like me, appreciate both landing methods, there's an intriguing solution. Building towers on drone ships. This approach would enable Starship, even without landing legs, to land on a drone ship. It'd be simpler if the platform had high stability like the two oil rigs SpaceX previously owned. However, using drone ships would still offer greater flexibility. SpaceX might increase the size and stability of their drone ships to accommodate this method because, as the FAA described, future starships could reach 150 meters and generate immense thrust. Successfully implementing this would unlock tremendous potential. Landing on a drone ship wouldn't interfere with other landing methods. Instead, it would provide more options for SpaceX and further extend Starship's global impact. If you find this exciting, please let me know in the comment section down below. Also, don't forget to like, share the video, and subscribe to our channel to keep up with SpaceX's development journey. As mentioned earlier, drone ship landings have significant potential, including for the Starship Earth-to-Earth -Earth plan. SpaceX has been considering Earth-to-Earth -Earth travel for quite some time, and with Starship's recent advancements, it's time to take the first steps. According to the FAA document, SpaceX will have a landing site in the Indian Ocean. However, some hypotheses suggest the landing site could be closer to the west coast of Australia. Why Australia? Well, Australia is a vital U.S. partner in various fields, and landing on a drone ship would strengthen SpaceX's cooperation with Australia and the U.S. After landing on the drone ship, Starship would be towed to an Australian port for refurbishment. You might wonder how quick recovery is possible given Australia's distance from the U.S. This aligns well with the Earth-to-Earth -Earth plan. SpaceX plans to build multiple launch pads worldwide akin to airports for civil aircraft. They could construct launch towers in Australia pending approval and establish a fuel system. Geographically, Australia is opposite of the U.S., making it an excellent location for Starship's first base outside the U.S. If successful, SpaceX could expand launch towers to other locations. Starship could then land on the tower or the drone ship, undergo refurbishment, and relaunch. This setup not only increases flexibility, but also enhances SpaceX's global reach. The potential for this approach is immense. But besides the significant advantage of using drone ships to extend Starship's influence globally, this strategy is essential for Starship's long-term space plans. However, SpaceX faces many challenges ahead. In addition to quickly recovering Starship and potentially adding landing legs, they will need a robust fleet of drone ships. Currently, with a few dozen Falcon 9 boosters, SpaceX requires three drone ships. And even that isn't always sufficient, occasionally necessitating land-based landings. In the future, SpaceX plans to have hundreds of Starship prototypes. According to the EIS plan in Florida, the FAA has indicated up to 40 Starship flights per year, and the plan at Starbase includes up to 25 flights annually. Ultimately, SpaceX's goal is thousands of flights per year to facilitate Mars colonization. This ambitious target will require numerous drone ships worldwide to meet the demand, which is crucial for the Earth-to-Earth -Earth plan. Even before Starship officially enters operation, its potential is already astronomical. The need for a powerful fleet of drone ships and efficiency recovery methods will be critical in realizing SpaceX's vision for Starship and its broader objectives in space exploration and interplanetary travel. Landing Starship on drone ships represents a bold leap forward, pushing its potential to new heights. This approach embodies a future where frequent launches rapid recoveries, continuous reuse, and global operations become the norm, an ambitious vision that even pioneering organizations like NASA once deemed unattainable. Yet, SpaceX is poised to transform this vision into reality, positioning itself as a leader in aerospace innovation. Skeptics might view this as unrealistic, 
but history shows that similar doubts were once voiced about SpaceX's ability to land Falcon 9 boosters on drone ships. As we bear witness, SpaceX continues to challenge the limits of what's possible and redefine the boundaries of space exploration. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.